So this is 5. And now let's go 6, 7, and 8. Just the way that that first one is bending over, just like so, makes it look like you need to put another one in. But in actual fact, that's why I'm having you count. So now let's slip stitch in. So you have your 8 coming through and through, and voila, there's your flat spot again. So let's uh, just cast off on this. So we're just going to trim the material over the hand like I normally do, and just going to pull through. And if you feel I'm more comfortable tying it, I don't ever really tie it. But because I know that I'm going to work this into a blanket, what I do is that I just put it over the top, just like so, and I throw it back over. And so what's going to happen is that when I go to sew these all together, that this straggler here is actually going to get caught within the sewing, therefore it never will come loose. So it all depends what you're using it for. Um, this is uh, a, a, one of the techniques that's called weaving. And uh, when this is the part of the V, so I would tend normally to go around that twice just to let it stretch a bit and then come through. So there you go. So you can see there, you now have all eight sides, just like the one in the pattern. Now the one in the background was a really uh, thick yarn. This is a four ply Bernat. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to do this little square really quickly. And so if you're feeling like uh, really adventurous, now also too, uh, see the center point? That would look amazing if the center was a different color because this here is kind of blocking this so you could actually have like almost a sun or anything. You can change your colors at any time. Don't be limited to what you see on my screen and you'll notice that both sides of this pattern look completely different. So you'll have to decide when you're going to sew these together on what side that you prefer over the other. So let's go and start the little square. So this is the bonus video. If you want to do an afghan and attach it with little squares, let's begin our slip knot. And again, this is compliments of all free crochet in Mikey's mail. So we're just going to slip your slip knot on. And now let's count three. So this does not count as one. So let's grab the material. One, two, and three. And you notice my hand never left the actual starting point because I don't like to let that go because I know exactly where the stitch is. So let's, uh, this counts as one double crochet, so we're just going to grab the material and going into the very starting stitch, which is the slip stitch, grabbing the material, point it through, pull through two, and two. And now we want to have clusters of three, so this is now considered one and two, and let's go in again to the same stitch, because we're going to work our way around a circle. So this is three, so now we want to turn a corner, just like you see there. Okay, or just like you see over there, you're turning a corner, and every time you turn a corner in a granny square, it's two. So one and two, and now let's go back into the center point again, the, the very first stitch, and we're going to put three more double crochets in a row. And you can just see that I've just naturally done it without telling you, is that I want to keep the straggler in control and caught. So when I go to stick my hook in, I want to make sure that my straggler is laying on top of the hook. Therefore, when this material comes around, it actually secures it into the position so that I can safely cut it later because whatever's hanging left out of the square is uh, far beyond where it was tied. So let's turn another corner, so one and two. There's also granny square um, tutorials available on Mikey's Mail and allfreecrochet.com, uh, even all free crochet. Um, YouTube site as well. So there's the three corners. Okay, so now we've got to go one more. So one and two. Oops, that was one and two. And going into the center spot again. Again, trapping, trapping that straggler into position. Get used to doing that. It's a really great way of hiding your, your starting points of your yarn. And um, a very easy technique. And now we have all sides created, but we don't really because we have this gap, this one, and this one. This one's missing because we have the chain two. So one and two. And now let's slip stitch into the very top of the first stitch available. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do now, you can see this hanging out, just grabbing your scissors, just trimming it. Oh, now it's gone. And voila, you'll never see that again. And now let's begin our next step. So this is one revolution. This is only two revolutions, ladies and gentlemen, what you see here. So this is a really easy way of putting something in between all of your octagons. So continuing along, so let's chain up three. So one, two, and three. Now this, just like the gapping that we did in the center and when we moved up the level, this is acting as the same way. This is actually supposed to be inside of this gap here. 
but instead what we're going to do is grab the material and going in to that gap so just going backward into that gap and you're going to double crochet two times so that chaining up of one counted as three so you got one two and three so now we want to jump over I always call this the runway when you're going across the flat top of a square so it's jump over by chaining one and then going in and we're going to do another three double crochets right in a row again right on that same gap and now we want to turn the corner so one and two we always chain two and now going back into the corner again that same corner to create the corner oh man I'm sounding confusing and uh, so we just want to continue you can see that corner was created and now we're in the runway again so let's chain one so you chain one every time you're in the runway and chaining two every time you turn a corner so that's again three double crochets for the first side of the corner okay chaining two because you're turning one and two and now going into the same corner again so I have figured out the mathematics that remember how we had eight uh, on the actual sides well you're actually going to have eight here as well so when you look at it here you have six right right in the middle okay so you have you have six and six so you then have the gap and a gap so that will equal your eight so that's what I've kind of figured that out to be so let's go into the next corner I should have probably waited before I told you that but that's the whole reasoning behind my my calculations on that you basically have to end up with the same numbers of stitches or you're not going to have your work coming together like perfectly like a puzzle right because that's what you're doing basically is every one of the pieces are to fit together properly so that there's no problems so again runway so chain one and now you're gonna already notice that you did the first part of this so now you're gonna finish off this corner with three double crochets in a row and to finish off the corner you have to then chain two to finish it so one and two and now going in grabbing the material, pulling it through for a slip knot. So through and through, and now you have your corner. So now you can just cast off with this as well, just over your hand. And again, what I do is I just pull it out, and I just wrap it twice around the actual corner piece. So pull it a little bit snug. So just wrap it around twice. And this is called the weaving technique, and I just weave it in top of the top stitches. So just sticking your hook in, grabbing the material, pulling it through, over and through and I tend to always go back at least beyond this first gap uh, no matter what size of square that it is and I always go around the gaps twice just like so and then I just finally finish it off so what I would do is that if you were assembling all these together leave the straggler don't uh, get all anxious and cut it but now you eventually have it done and you can see that there's a size difference in between the two of what I just showed you because the material is actually thinner so because this one will also be slightly smaller so it's important that you stay within the same size in order to make this work so to put these together you had remember if you had eight in between you now have six right here yeah and you also have a little bit of extra on the side so you got one here then three that's four and then three again and then one in the end so you can pull that a little bit more uh, to give it a little bit of a stretch in order to putting these actual together. So good luck with that and enjoy this free tutorial brought to you by Offrey Crochet and Mikey's Mail.